Hey, what's up everyone? Thanks for joining me back here in my kitchen for another recipe video. Today, I'm super excited to share this one with you guys. I'm gonna be showing you how to make this amazing vegan queso style dip, but at home using ingredients you probably already have in your fridge and in your cupboard. And it's actually like quite healthy, super tasty, really versatile. I think you guys are gonna love this. So not only does it make an amazing dip that you can use for like chips and veggies, it's also a super good sauce that you can put on top of bowls, tacos, and you could even use it for nachos. So I recently discovered this queso style dip in Costco a couple weeks ago and as soon as I saw it was plant-based, saw the ingredients, I bought it right away and have been enjoying it so much on just about like everything. And I know a lot of you might not have Costco memberships or you know, you might not have one near you or you just don't, you can't find this queso style dip and you wanna try it. So I figured, hey, why not kind of figure out everything they put in there and recreate it, share it with all of you guys. So the other night I went to work and started to try and recreate this and I think I have finally figured it out. It took me a while and I went through a few different versions of it first and I made a huge mess in the creative process, but I'm pretty sure that I have created something that is pretty close and if not exactly the same, equally as good in my opinion. So this isn't like a sponsored video or anything by these guys. Well, I guess that'd kind of be a dumb like sponsorship, eh? Yeah. Like, <laughs> just like you're just not. Yeah. Hey, here's this product, and here's how to make it on your own. Yeah. Okay. So I, I guess I didn't have to say it's a, not a sponsored video. That was dumb. And this is actually how I get a lot of inspiration for my different sauces, recipes, meals, and different flavors to put together is by looking at different ingredient labels and you know different meals at favorite restaurants and stuff like that and then trying to either recreate it in my head or in this case looking at the ingredient list and recreating it like that. And something good to know about the ingredient listing is that here in North America at least and I'm sure many other places around the world they have to be listed in decreasing order from the most used ingredient to the least used. So that can kind of give you an idea in your head of you know what most of it is and what least of it is and then you can just kind of figure it out, uh, the ratio sort of in the middle. I don't know, that's kind of how I do it at least, so that's what we're gonna do with this one, and it works. Anyways, enough talking, let's get started with making this queso style dip. So good, I can't wait to share this recipe with you guys, it's gonna change your life. Okay, maybe not, actually yeah, it probably is. <laughs> Oh yeah, and of course, I will put the recipe in the description box down below to make it easy for you guys, but please watch the video anyways. This is how I, you know, make a living and continue to make these videos. But uh, I'm gonna first show you all the ingredients that are in the recipe so you can kind of like get a visual of it, and then I'll show you all the amounts and everything as we go. But it's really easy. You guys are gonna see how easy this is. So if we have a quick look at the ingredients from the queso style dip here, you can see that they're all pretty common, and I've got them all out here on the cutting board. So. Everything you probably already have in your cupboards. I mean, I use a lot of this stuff in my cooking anyways. I mean, pretty much everything here. So uh, cauliflower, red pepper, garlic, we've got some almond butter, nutritional yeast, apple cider vinegar back there, red onion, paprika, cumin, chili spice, which isn't in this, but I do find it adds a little extra flavor. So I do like that in there. And then a little bit of salt as well. That's pretty much it. Oh yeah, and I should say, this is a blended sauce, so you are gonna need a blender of some type. So the first ingredient we've got here is cauliflower, and we're gonna be using two cups of cauliflower. And you just wanna kinda roughly chop it and get it into some sort of measuring device here. That should be good right around there. So we're just gonna steam the cauliflower. Oh man, I really packed it in there. There we go. Actually, you know what, hold on. I'm gonna trade out this chunk of whatever for that, way better. Okay. So that should take about 10 minutes, that's it. So while the cauliflower is steaming, we might as well just get the rest of the ingredients all together, measured up and put into the blender. And that's pretty much it, the sauce is so simple. So this is really the hardest part, is just like steaming the cauliflower, getting all the ingredients together and measuring them. I mean, that's not just the hardest part, that's like the whole thing. So anyways, let's measure all these up and then um, that should be done by the time we measure all these up. We'll get all in there, blend it up, and we're gonna be eating in the next five minutes. <laughs> let's do this. So the next ingredient is red bell pepper. So I'm gonna use about a half a pepper for this. And you guys can play around with all these 
you know, the amounts and the ratios and stuff. I mean, make it yourself, taste it and see. You might be like, what the heck, this isn't queso, this is red pepper dressing or something, but no, it's not. I, uh, at first I put too much pepper in, so I dialed it back and I think this is gonna be a good amount. So we have half a pepper. And whenever I'm putting anything this big into like a blender, whatever, I usually just chop it up a little bit. It just helps everything to blend and yeah, just makes it quicker in the end. That way you're not like shaking it and having to, you know, get in there with a knife and stuff. There we go. So next you want one or two cloves of garlic. I really like garlic. So I'm gonna put in probably one and a half. These are really big cloves, so I probably won't put them all in. Actually, let's chop that up. We don't want any garlic chunks in our sauce. There we go. And then the juice from a quarter of a lemon. So if you had too much lemon, it definitely makes it a little bit too acidic to be like a cheese sauce. So you don't want to overdo the lemon. So I'm actually not going to squeeze all this in, but yeah, around a quarter of a lemon should be good. Next, we're going to do two tablespoons or so of chopped onion. There's one tablespoon. Two tablespoons. Two tablespoons of nutritional yeast. All right, two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar from the largest uh, ACV jug ever. So two teaspoons. So we're gonna do two teaspoons of almond butter. And I found this surprising too, but trust me, it's in there. There's definitely almond butter in there, and I found it unusual, but it seems to work. So two teaspoons of almond butter. And you don't really taste the almond butter in this recipe. It just, I don't know what it adds to it, just kind of probably some fat and some consistency, but uh, definitely works. One teaspoon of paprika. And actually, I don't think there's paprika in here either, is there? I don't know, when I was experimenting, I tried around, a, I tried like a bunch of stuff and this is definitely like what I liked best. So yeah, let's just stick with it. A half a teaspoon of cumin. I'm also going to add a half a teaspoon of chili spice. And uh, now this is my own addition as well. It's not in the queso style dip from the store, but I found it was lacking just a little something before I added this. And then once I added it, I was like, oh yeah, now it's all come together. So, you know, it's probably more of like a third of a teaspoon. I don't want to have too much of this in there because I don't want to overpower it. So a third of a teaspoon of chili spice. And next we're going to add some salt. So like with many prepackaged sauces, this one does have like quite a bit of salt in it, so just be mindful of that. And if you want it to taste exactly the same, you're kind of going to have to put that much salt in it. But uh, we're going to do uh, two thirds of a teaspoon of salt. So remember, this is not one serving of dip. Like you should not just have this like a super smoothie. This is designed to be like a dip. So uh, we'll start off with a third of a teaspoon or two thirds of a teaspoon. I might add a tiny bit more salt along the way if we need to. So the next thing I'm going to add is just two teaspoons of water. I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but you need to have it in order to get the right consistency. So back to check on the cauliflower here, and it's probably been just about 10 minutes, and oh yeah, it's super nice and soft. So it's ready to go, and take it off the heat. I'm just gonna let it cool for just a couple seconds. So next we just have to add the cauliflower to the blender cup here. All right, so now all we have to do is just blend it all up. All right, so here it is, and you can see it's nice and thick. All right, so now for the taste test. Wow, <laughs> yeah, it's so good. Mm. And let me compare it to this one. It's not exactly the same. This is still cheesier, and I don't know how they do it. There's one ingredient in here that I can't find, and it's chia protein. But I can't imagine that that would make all the difference. But anyways, pretty dang close and really, really good and just an awesome substitute for this. So I'm gonna get making some loaded nachos to put this on top. But first, I'm gonna get Crystal to try this out and see what you think of it, see how we did. <laughs> you should have done a blind taste test. Oh, that could have, well, we can still do that. <laughs> no. But you, the temperature is different. This has been in the fridge, and this one's like, has hot cauliflower in it. <laughs> hot cauliflower? <laughs> yeah. 
then we can That's like a good like band name, Hot Cauliflower. Okay, I'll try yours first. Yeah. So Crystal, for you guys who don't know aren't, you know, part of the channel, she is my roommate. <laughs> <laughs> and girlfriend. <laughs> Man, it's so good. It's good, isn't it? The store-bought one? It's a little bit like maybe creamier? Yeah. But it's a little kind of muted. It's a little muted. Yeah, it's not as like yours is a little bit more asapasse. Yeah, it's, it's got very a bit of kick. Spicy. I think that's from the fresh car like. But I like yours. It's really good and it tastes like more fresh. Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look yeah, at that. So good. Vegan style <laughs> queso. I think you could even play with this a little bit. Maybe even do if you wanted to. You could probably even put like more nutritional yeast if you really. You think? Wanted yeah. It, if you really wanted it cheesy, but I like where it's at right now. But I'm just saying for everyone at home, the fun thing with sauce is yeah. you can just do different things. Yeah, there's this cheesier. I don't know. Okay, let's just like. Just hammer the nutritional For the sake yeast. of argument. But it is interesting because nutritional yeast is like really low on the ingredients. That's why, I know, that's why I didn't. Okay, so a third spoonful of nutritional yeast. I wonder if that'll make any difference. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think it might. I don't know. Mm hmm. <laughs> Mm. It's good like that, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I feel like that brought like the cheesy level up just a little bit. Okay, well, okay, so stop messing so with my recipes. Get out of here. <laughs> okay, we'll make the adjustments in the description box. Three <laughs> tablespoons of nutritional yeast. Wow. Yeah, it's so good. Wow. It's good with two, it's good with three. So, I'm gonna make those nachos and yeah, and then eat them and show you guys. <laughs> and then the video's <laughs> done. This is amazing. <laughs> So I'm gonna start these nachos by making some of this modern meat crumble first. And this is gonna basically mimic like a ground beef kind of thing, uh, but obviously a vegan version of it. And I just added some frozen corn to that as well, just to give it you know, a bit more flavor, a bit more color and everything. And then uh, just gonna chop up a whole bunch of veggies to put on top. So uh, I've just got some red bell pepper, orange bell pepper, some sweet red onion, some tomatoes, and some jalapeno peppers. So I'm not a huge fan of like a ton of spice, so hopefully these aren't too spicy, but uh, I'm sure they're gonna be just fine. I also have some salsa and some avocado that'll go on there afterwards. But for now, yeah, let's just start building up these nachos. So I'm just gonna be putting the nachos into the oven. So I'm just gonna do it on this baking sheet here with the silicone mat. I know it looks like really sketchy and dirty, but it's not, it's just burned. This is just how they look. Making nachos is always like so fun. I don't know what it is. I don't make them very often, but I always get excited every time I do. I can't really figure out in my head if I want to put this stuff on like before or after. So I think I'm probably just going to do both. I don't want them to be soggy, so I'm just going to put a little bit on beforehand, but I think it's going to help because I don't have any like uh, day of cheese or any, you know, anything that's actually going to melt. So this will be nice. All right, so here it is before it goes into the oven, and man, it looks so good. Look how many colors there are there. This is gonna be so good. So uh, let's just give it a quick little taste test right away here, because there's nothing you know that you can't eat raw on here, or whatever state it's in right now. Mmm. <laughs> wow. Holy crap, that's good. It really doesn't need long in the oven. I'm just gonna fire it in there for a couple minutes and then pull it out. Five minutes later. Okay, I think they're probably ready now. Let's check it. Yes! Wow. Woo! Doesn't look too much different than when they went in, but man, it looks amazing. I'm gonna try and figure out how to get this onto a plate. Come on. Like, so hopefully it slides. See what I'm saying? There we go, we're getting it, we're getting it. Needs a jiggle to release the Friction. Heck yeah! Thanks, baby. <laughs> Wow, so here it is all plated up and I don't have to tell you guys because you can see it, but it looks incredible, man. So uh, let's get into it and see how good it is. Let me find a good nacho here with a little bit of everything on it.
Holy smokes. <laughs> wow. Mm. Okay, wow. So, yeah, these are the best nachos I've had in a long time. And I don't know where Crystal went, but she's definitely missing out. I'm sure she'll <laughs> sniff these out and be out here soon enough. But I think that's probably it for this video. I'm going to go and enjoy this. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got something out of it. You definitely learned a new recipe. Hopefully you make it. If you do, tag me on Instagram. I would love to see what you do with it. Thank you guys so much for watching. And definitely hit the like button. It helps me in the algorithm. Subscribe so you can see more from me. And I will see you guys again. And use that tip of like looking at the ingredients on you know certain products that you like and like try and duplicate it or at least get some inspiration from it. Much love for me. I hope you guys are having a good day. I will see you soon. Bye.